So if you haven't watched my two-part series about the history of cats, right over here, I mean, why not? Why haven't you? So after this video, go ahead and watch that one. But my point is that I detail not only the evolution of cats, in terms of their physical evolution and their, their relationship to us. But to that point, it's also about the rocky journey they've had with humans through time. I mean, they've been deified and vilified and nobody has that any worse in terms of that dichotomy than black cats. Black cats have suffered a lot of bad raps through time. You know, that's why we have superstitions about bad luck cats or their association with witchcraft. And that really is by and large because they still hold a lot of mystery to us. We we don't understand a lot about cats. Heck, I don't understand a lot about cats to this day. You either embrace that and that's the mystery and they bring good into your life or that mystery makes you resentful. I don't get you, so I don't like you. I don't get you, so I'm scared of you. And black cats really have been the focus of that. As a matter of fact, if you think about the whole notion of the Halloween cat and the Halloween cat is meant to be scary. And of course, Halloween and black cats, the association with witches, but if you think Think about it, that Halloween cat pose, arched back, fur standing up, <sighs> like that. That's not supposed to be scary. That's actually a scared cat. That's a cat who's trying to make themselves bigger and scarier because they're petrified. And that is the mystery, not just about cats, but about black cats. So today, it's all about black cats and their bad rap. So here are some things that you may not have known about the black cat. First of all, they appear in 22 different breeds of cats, anywhere from the all black Bombay to other more common breeds like the domestic short hair or the Norwegian forest cat, Maine Coons, the Oriental, La Perm, the Cornish Rex, on and on and on and on. All of them come in black. Black is a genetic mutation in cats, but clearly a very well evolved mutation because black cats are incredibly popular. There's a whole lot of them. As a matter of fact, when you think about it, how have they evolved over time to live after they were burned at the stake and almost eradicated a couple times over? Because they're black, they are more likely to survive in the wild, you know, camouflage into their surroundings. So that's one thing. And it has been theorized that actually black cats have more of an ability to fight off disease. So those are some things about black cats. So in order to understand why we perceive the black cat the way we do now, or why there are those fragments of belief, I think it's important to go all the way back, as far back as we can. And I think a great place to start is mythology. I'll start with Celtic mythology. There is a creature called Cat Sith which in alternate ways is sort of a fairy and also perceived as a witch, depending on what folklore you're listening to. It is said that this cat Sith sort of haunts the Scottish Highlands, either known as a fairy or a witch, who, by the way, could transform him or herself into human form or cat form nine times. Nine lives, get it? But that's the start of this dichotomy. Fairy, witch, both. Celtic mythology. Now when it comes to mythology, the Greeks got it. Nothing against the Celts, but I would say the Greek mythology portrait of black cats is even more damning. Hera, the wife of Zeus, had turned her servant Galinthius into a black cat out of anger and spite. And Galinthius then went on to serve Hecate, who was the goddess of magic and spells. So just like that, the black cat became associated with sorcery and witchcraft. There it is. I gotta say, if you gotta blame the demonization, the official demonization of cats, and especially black cats, in the world, starting in Europe, it would be Pope Gregory the Ninth. Thanks, Pope Gregory the Ninth, because in 1233, he caved under pressure to call out these depraved rituals of these so-called satanic cults. And he basically called out witches as worshiping a devil that was this shadowy half-man, half-cat. I mean, that basically made cats catus non gratis, especially in Europe. And it also sort of put the seal of approval on the persecution and slaughter of cats all over Europe, and especially black cats. Basically by the 1300s, it's theorized anyway, that cat numbers were depleted so badly that that's one of the things that allowed the bubonic plague to just flourish because mice and rats were just like, whoo, 
ooh, there's no cats around, we're cool. And the more this went on, the worse the rap was that black cats had on them. Let me tell you something, Pope Gregory, thanks a lot. You caused a lot of damage. If you think that persecution of cats ended in the 1300s, oh no, my friends, it, it got worse. As black cats were associated with witchcraft, the persecution of witches just got bigger and bigger and more fervent as time went on from 1692 to 1693 in Salem, Massachusetts. At that point, witch hysteria had reached such a crescendo that we had women being burned at the stake all over the place and black cats became this symbol. Now, closely entwined with the concept of witchcraft, it was said that black cats would assist witches and that witches could transform into black cats in order to lurk in the shadows and cast their spells. It was unbelievable, the hysterical pitch. Now that gave rise to what? Superstition. So you know what's bad luck? It's bad luck if you don't subscribe to this channel. So take a second, you might even think you're subscribed, but you're not. So go ahead and just for good measure, and just so you know, knock on wood, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell to get all kinds of notifications. And hey, while you're at it, for some extra good luck, right next to the subscribe button is the join button. And if you hit the join button, you can learn all about becoming a Mojo Knot, my VIP club, where you get exclusive behind the scenes footage, bonus content, membership to our Discord channel, which is private, live chats, special giveaways, and, and you could see stuff like this. It makes me wonder, how do black cats feel about humans turning them into witches and half-witches and fairies and all that? Let's find out. And do you think that it's possible to reprogram the world to see black cats as who they are, lovely and wonderful? So what is superstition? Superstition is defined as superstition is a belief or practice resulting from ignorance, fear of the unknown, trust in magic or chance, or a false conception of causation. And by the way, isn't that funny? Superstition comes from a fear of the unknown, from step on a crack, break a mirror seven years, bad luck, or just knock on wood when something happens. All of these superstitions, but what are we talking about today? Superstitions like it's bad luck if a black cat crosses your path. Now, if you think that superstition is like specific, consider this one. The Italian superstition that if a black cat jumps into the bed of a sick person, they will die. Okay, no, I'm not done yet. That would be the German superstition that if a black cat is walking in front of you, if they step off to the right, your future is bright. If they step off to the left, not so much, my friend. What? Who knows? And that's how silly these things can get. And if you think that all black cat superstitions are about bad luck, keep watching, my friend. Okay, you're still watching. So let's get into black cat superstitions that are actually about good luck. In Great Britain, it is known by British sailors that a black cat on a ship actually brings good luck and will help to guarantee their return from wherever they were. And another British, and this is more of a custom than a superstition, is to give a bride a black cat on their wedding day as a form of good luck and prosperity for the future. The Scots believe that it is good luck for a black cat to appear in your doorway. Okay. Bring them in. Now this one is great because it's mind boggling to the Western mind because of the whole witchcraft association. But in Japan, if you are a single woman and you have a black cat, it's known that you will attract better suitors. Oh, crazy. And, and the, and, and, uh, oh my God, this has me so excited. I can't hold it back. But then we get to the absolute bang to the witchcraft bang, and that is ancient Egypt, the goddess of fertility and protection and all things good was the black cat goddess Bashtet. And Bashtet was worshiped by the Egyptians. As a matter of fact, it was punishable by death if you killed a black cat in ancient Egypt. If there is a mystery, there is worshiping, and there is vilifying and burning at the stake and all stops in between. And that's what the black cat has represented through time. And to circle all the way back 
to what I was talking about at the very beginning about the Halloween cat and how badly misinterpreted that body position is. It is a surviving, damning vision of the black cat, especially when we associate during Halloween a witch and a black cat. I know that you're saying to yourself, oh, Jackson, stop taking this all so seriously. But these are vestiges of discrimination and wholesale slaughter of an innocent animal. And now it's kind of a fun thing. And I would say that, that anything that holds that dirt should be swept away. We gotta spread the word, you guys. Black cats are good luck. Black cats are righteous. I got a couple of them at home and they're spoiled rotten and they know they're better than the rest of the cats. So, as it should be. Let's just give them that, okay? So anyway, tell me about your black cats. What black cats do you have in your life? What have you noticed that said, you know what, my black cats are bringing me good luck. You know, it's National Black Cat Day, October 27th. Spread the word. Adopt a black cat today. Foster a black cat today. And if somebody says, ooh, black cats, ooh, don't cry, oh, just, you know, I was gonna say smack him in the head, but I don't want that on me. Just, you know, say, oh, seriously, dude? Or something like that. Wow, it is time for me to sign off. Until next time, you guys, all light, all love, all black cat mojo to you. Let me tell you something, Pope Gregory, thanks a lot. Thanks, asshole, and f you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>